Hello and welcome everybody to Aquaholics Anonymous. Thank you, Chad Nuga, Ed, my co-host for being here, and the lovely Mrs. Fever Shigal. I appreciate having you on. So today I want to talk a little bit about plants. Uh, let me go ahead and put the disclaimer out there. I am not a master aquatic horticulturist. I'm not a plant nerd. Um, I just know what works well for me. And I get a lot of questions about plants, so I thought it would be an awesome topic for tonight. Uh, I know John is still running over at KG Tropicals, but I figured this would be a good chance to say hello. And we had about 20 people waiting. So real quick, let's say some hellos and then we'll get into the topic. Uh, Tebow and Mary Page Flynn. Sorry, second, so let me go all the way up to the top. I know Tampa Tom Fishing was in here. Good to see you, buddy. Um, Streetwise, who else we got? Sacred Aquatics 2, Amy, I know was in here. Recons Aquariums, good to see you. Well, through here, we had some new names. Lots of good conversation. We're talking about tacos and it made me kind of hungry. Um, I had but tacos today. Did you? We were supposed to have tacos yesterday and Taco Bell was actually closed when Shy went up there. So yeah, it is what it is, but we're going to jump into the topic here in just a second. I know we had some other people. Jaden, hello. Glad to see you here. First time seeing you. There's Tampa Tom, Cody, some GRV Aquatic, Sherry Kramer, Cichlids 23. I appreciate all of you being here today. So I am I'm kind of one of those people John talked about over there when he mentioned other people doing polls. I've done polls in the past, and then I th had the thought after I made the... Uh, stream for this week i was like why don't i do a poll and then i was like you know what john's doing polls so i was like hey just a heads up i did a poll for my live stream um just wanted to uh let you know because it may have been a, a subliminal thing that it popped into my head for that reason but it was plants and it says uh live plants are a wonderful addition to almost any aquarium what is your favorite type of plant and so we didn't break it down into specifics but and very last place, which kind of surprised me because it's one of my favorites, uh, was mosses. Mosses came in at 8%, uh, kind of surprising for me. Floating plants at 12%. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, kind of what goes into these categories. I guess I could do it now. So your mosses, you've, there are a lot of mosses. Most of what you see is a mix, but you've got like your java moss, Christmas moss, pilo moss, weeping moss, star moss, and a lot of other ones as well. Um, and then when you get into your floating plants, and this is things that are specifically floaters only, the way that I did the poll, um, you've got things like water spangles, uh, salvinia, um, which is water spangles, uh, frog bit, water lettuce, and some people absolutely hate it, but duckweed. It does serve a purpose sometimes, I think. Uh, coming in after that was other at 19%, because you got to have other on there. So, hey, Keith. Rico Stan, good to see you all. Pet Zotics, appreciate you being here. Um, and there are some things that fall into that, uh, including the Plastica or the Plastic Play. And I had somebody ask why that wasn't on there. And I just only had five options, so I couldn't put that on there as much as I wanted to. And then coming in with 24% of the vote was stem plants that are not left floating. So there are a lot of stem plants that we Typically or generally, we'll just leave as floaters, um, but I specifically listed that as stem plants not left floating. And some of those things would be water wisteria, rotalia, uh, ludwigia, pogo stem and stellatus octopus, or the octopus plant, and you've got your, your warts, your horn wart, your money wart, and a lot of other things. The thing that came in number one, which kind of surprised me, was your rhizome plants. That got 36% of the vote. Um, and I guess that shouldn't have surprised me be that because that's going to include all of your various Anubias, um, Anubias Nana, Nana Petite, all of that wonderful stuff. And then like your Java Fern and Bulbitis. Um, the reason I went to all of that is to just kind of break those down into groups just to give some people ideas if you're kind of new to plants. Um, or if you're like I started out and I think Ed, you started the same way. We just, we got plants, they started growing everywhere and we didn't really know what we were doing. Um, so I've tried to learn on the fly, if you will. But um, I started that, off with plants, just putting them <laughs> in my tank and watching them die. I did that too. That was actually my first experience with plants. Uh, my previous go around in the hobby years and years ago, I had horrible luck with plants, couldn't keep anything alive. Uh, this go around in the hobby, when I first got into it, I had a lady, long story short, uh, she was getting rid of her fish tanks for health reasons, and she had a bunch of plants that went with it. It was kind of like package deal. Here's everything, tanks, fish, plants, all of it. Um, and so I said, well, 
not going to cost me anything extra to try. So I gave it a try, and from there, I absolutely fell in love with planted aquariums. And so I've tried to learn as I go. Um, there are a lot of people that know an awful lot about plants out there. Uh, Bentley Pasco is one of my favorites. Uh, I really love his channel, and he is just a, a plant guru. Um, he is actually a, a master aquatic horticulturist. So, uh, Sickness 23 says, plants hate my water. Yeah, and there are some things you can do, but overall that goes back to fighting your water that we've talked about before, and it's kind of one of those things. If if they don't like it, they don't like it. The plants probably hate cichlet, his cichlets, too. Right. <laughs> they probably hate the things they're sharing the water with. Uh, here's something I see happen a lot. Uh, Recon's Aquarium says, I put some java fern in my tanks recently for my second take on live plants. They now have the dreaded BBA on them, so there's that. Yes, um... You know, there are some people that embrace blackbeard algae, which is BBA, uh, for anybody that's not familiar. Uh, also, there are people like myself that embrace the green hair algae in certain tanks. It, it can look really, really pretty when you let it grow out and you have, you know, flow a certain way and things like that. And you get all sorts of microorganisms in it, and it can definitely have some benefits. Shrimp absolutely love the stuff, um, and it's a great place for a little fry to kind of hide out. Tampa Tom Fishing says, I go to Bentley with my plant questions. Absolutely. I mean, the man designed his own um, lighting program for the flu ball, if you will. So, uh, yeah, Corvus Oskin is another good one. Joel is very knowledgeable on plants. Both of those are good guys. And, of course, you've got, like, aquarium co-op. I mean, you know, the guy sells more plants than any of us could ever kill, put together, or grow. So, great stuff there. The guy who got me into plants was Sean Peck watching all of his plants and stuff he's actually every tank that he has is filled with them it is sean has got the very awesome um, method as i call it of plant it and then do not touch it and stuff just gets to grow in for long periods of time um, i've got a a fluval five gallon that i set up with peck tech on his channel uh, that i'm really excited to do a three-month update on just because of that growth and that's one of those that I set it up with him, and in his style, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to touch it, and I'm just going to let it grow. Um, but that's, I'm really enjoying that. You know, I, I must have moved 20 or 30 plants around a day. Uh, Candy, thank you for being here and lurking. Kaylor's Aquatics, good to see you. Um, but, yeah, it's, plants can be tricky, and I can understand why, you know, people have difficulties with them. Again, I've had difficulties with them in the past. I'm fortunate I've got good water, and I've kind of learned from my mistakes, if you will. So did you have anything that helped you when you first started this uh, last go-round to keep your well, plants alive? Uh, really, who got me, I how I got into fish tube altogether mm -hmm. was I wanted, I loved fish tanks, but I wanted to make an ornament for my fish tank. And so I was like, I wonder if they have anything like that on YouTube. And that's how I found Sean Peck because he'd made a hand or maybe it was his face. No, it was his hand first. Okay. And then all of his tanks were full of plants. And I was like, gosh, I wish I could make awesome live plants like that. You know, and he just made it so simple. And then Corey with the LEDs and the Flugel 3.0, mm -hmm. I, he convinced me to buy one from, you know, Corey, I bought one from Corey. And that's my first tank, and it, it was like a jungle. I just let it go crazy out of control. And uh, it that was a changing point in my whole life for fish. You know, my first, I don't know, 25, 30 years, whatever, I used to just, I would try the banana plants, you yeah. know, every so often. I even, I even put a fish tank up in the window seal to try to collect sunlight to be able to grow those back in the eighties and that didn't work. So, uh, you know, I've just, I've tried different things and nothing ever really worked for me until uh, the LED was invented. And now it's just a whole new world for me. It really is the, um, the LEDs make it a lot easier. I will say that I've got plants growing under probably a dozen different types or brands of lights, everything from the old school, massive fluorescent bulbs, uh, T5s, um, of course, to LEDs. 
and then the like LED shop lights, which look like fluorescents but are not. Um, so you do have a lot of options, but I will say that the LEDs tend to be the best thing that I have found for growing plants. So I have I a list. Oh, sorry, I didn't ahead. know you still use some of those fluorescent lights. I, I might I have do. some I could give you if you want. If you want. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I um, I, f I find that everything serves a purpose. Um, and you've got to remember, people were doing plants, you know, 15 years ago. It was just a completely different style, and you had to pay more attention to it, if you will. Um, planted tanks back then took a lot more knowledge, which was a lot harder to come by. Uh, it was mostly through forums or word of mouth. So it's a little different, but I have found some of the old fluorescents actually work better on certain things than some of the LEDs. But LEDs are definitely the easiest and the thing that I would recommend if you are just getting into plants and you want something, I don't want to say to guarantee success, but to give you the best advantage at getting started in plants. So real quick, so we are already 15 minutes in. I'm going to grab the super chats, super stickers, say thank you to you all. Moderators, I appreciate you all being here, um, doing the awesome job that you do free of charge. And I think Shy is going to take care of the party poppers because everybody enjoyed that last time. So we got <laughs> Grumpy Mike's Fish with the dollar super pooper chat. Mike, I appreciate you being here, my friend. Glad that you sent me those stickers. I appreciate those. And thank you for pooping on the chat with that <laughs> 99 cents. <laughs> And then we have Fantastic Freaks with the $5 Super Chat. I really enjoyed your video. Um, that hex tank that you've got set up looks really awesome, fantastic. I just want to tell you that. I know I left a comment, but while I'm talking directly to you, that was, that's a good-looking tank. And, of course, I love the Pleco you got. But go check out that guy's video. That was that was fun. I liked it. Uh, but Fantastic Freaks says, Ed Chiefs look good. I uh, hope the Packers follow suit at Minnesota this weekend. Rotala indica, java ferns, and giant vowels are my top three specific plants. I can't argue with those. Those are very, very nice plants, um, and I do definitely love the vowels. You can't see it really well, but I've got some vowel in here that it's, some of it's a good two foot long in that tank up there. Normally what I'll do is I'll take it at that length, and I will put it into one of my really tall tanks. But I've got plans to do the... Um, to get that 220 gallon moved in for the piranha and when i do that i want to do a portion of it with the really tall valve so i'm kind of just growing it all there if you will but thank you both for those i do really really appreciate it so i'm going to share this with you now this is actually from the same website that ed and i talked about on his channel with the um the top fish the other day this was uh it's actually a top 12 list of plants there's one I'm not including because they didn't even bother to put a picture. And if they didn't bother to put a picture, it couldn't even have been that good of a plant, right? Uh, so give me just a second. Well, I hope it wasn't Anubius. <laughs> no, it was, uh, I'm going to screw up the name on this. Again, I'm not a plant nerd. I always want to say worst thing. Echinodorus. It might be Echinodorus. It could be something else completely. Um, but they. Uh, it's a variety of Amazon sword, but they didn't even bother putting a picture. So let's share this on here, and then I'll grab my chat back real quick. And we're going to critique their top 10 list of plants. <laughs> You're going to be surprised at what's up towards the top of this thing. And then we will come back, and I've got a list of my top five plants. Uh, we should have time to get to that really quick afterwards. And I think Ed's going to come up with five plants for us as well. So let's share this. So as I mentioned, they've got one on here. They didn't even bother to put a picture, so we're going to skip that one. We'll pull number 11. This was actually a top 12 list, but we're going to shift it all up a notch. So we're going to say number 10 is water wisteria. Now, I think that is an awesome plant. I've not had a whole lot of experience with it, but I've got some now. But my buddy Chattanooga Ed, which is now there <laughs> instead of over there, um, you've got some wisteria. And it's absolutely amazing looking. Yes, so, I, I love it. It's it's a really neat plant to watch your fry in, but uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because maybe it'll be in my top five. <laughs> okay. All right. We could do that. Well, it, it is an awesome plant. <laughs> well, um, it is. Yeah, let's talk about it. You know, you can grow it in the dirt or you can float it. Yep. And I really like to float it. And if you don't cap, like if you don't put uh, anything on top of your tank, 
mm-hmm. it totally looks different. It looks like a bush growing out of the top of your plant or out of the top of your tank. Uh, James, when you were over here at my house, that 120 mm-hmm. that had the the big bush and you fixed the filter yeah. on it, that was uh, Water Mysteria. Oh, wow. And it didn't so, even look like what I'm used to seeing it as. I mean, it's looks, amazing the, what you've got set up in there. It's probably, what, two and a half, three foot across that you've got floating up at the top there? Yeah, and almost a foot above the water. Yeah. So it, it's pretty crazy. I really like that. Um, I see, I, I don't know how much we should talk about it. <laughs> but you can also grow it. And I originally tried to grow it and plant it. And it was almost all completely dying. And I think it basically rotted off at the bottom and floated to the top and then went bonkers. And yeah, that's one of my favorites. I got that at the Bermuda Triangle. I just bought one plant and now I literally have it. At, I probably have 500 of them. Yeah. And that's another great thing. Once you, I don't even want to say get into plants, but once you can get started with plants and you're successful with them, it's so easy to go from one tank of plants to two to however many tanks you have. Give me just a second. I've seen a couple people mention they're having some buffering issues. I'm going to drop the latency down just a bit. See if that helps. It says we've got a great connection and a great signal, but that should help anybody that's having issues right now. So bear with me just a second. While you're doing that, I'm going to thank Bob for his $10 super chat. And he says, please remember, Pam, she had to cancel this weekend's camping trip due to her fall yesterday. Her oh, no. arm is bad today. That I hope she doesn't have a broken arm. That would really stink. I hope not. <laughs> I hadn't even heard that. So I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. If anybody talks to plant, Pam, please give her my condolences. I may send her a message, but I hate to bug her with more stuff. Um, yeah. that's, that's rough. I am sorry to hear that. And thank you, Bob, for letting us know. Bob's an awesome guy. Yes. Thank you, Bob, for letting us know. And for the super chat, very much appreciated. Kaylor's aquatics. Um, okay. Bob's you know, an awesome guy. Bob uh, wanted to go to Knoxville and I forgot all about it, but Bob, it, I don't, I hope he didn't already go, but if you didn't go, let me know and I'll go out there with you. If he did, he snuck in and out cause he didn't say anything to me about it. But, um, I would also like to say um, to any of the moderators, if you would like to put up the link to uh, Keller's Aquatics, not just his channel, but also to the ARC, uh, which Lisa had talked about in the previous stream, the um, his not-for-profit shelter, I do appreciate that. And any help with that is always greatly appreciated. Well, while that's loading, let's go ahead and pull up the next plant. So we're gonna bump this up. It'll now be our number nine is Java Moss, one of the, my favorites absolutely love java moss um i love all of the mosses but java is what i got started with so it's definitely my favorite if i could only have one thing and it was going to flourish in all of my tanks i would definitely go with java moss i do think okay yeah i don't know a lot about java moss here i could bring some down I've got some in this container right here. I'm just uh, kind of waiting to pick the perfect tank. I've got three more or five more tanks I have to set up. So I'm thinking about putting it in. Uh, the, oh, you know what? I don't think that was Java Moss. I put was the Java your, Moss. I think that was your pilo or your pillow, however you want to pronounce it. No, so the pilo is right here. That was some stuff Okay. that Nathan had uh, got in from Sand Creek Aquatics. He had, there was just a little piece of it in uh, that tub that I brought home that had the uh, jungle vowel in it. Or the, what is it? Not jungle vowel, uh, the Amazon sword that was gigantic. I put in with my angels, and there was like a little couple pieces of that floating on top. Gotcha. And I've been just growing it into a massive little pile from just a few little pieces. So I think that he got it right out of his his uh, creek there in Saint Saint uh, Saint Creek. He and named the show after the creek that ran through his property. Very very cool. 
moss is one of those things a lot of times if you're buying like a moss mat um or for example i'll use the aquarium co-op moss bridges um you get kind of a mixture of moss just because that's the way that a lot of times it is grown by the farms uh, or the propagation centers however you want to phrase it um, so you can get kind of a, a mix of one to four different mosses if you will just depending upon exactly where it comes from but it all looks pretty similar and all grows fairly well um, just keep in mind generally when you buy mosses a lot of the time and this is for most plants actually uh, they're immersed grown or grown not submerged grown out of the water if you will uh, so they do have to transition over so you'll see some die off and you'll see some changes in the way that plant looks a lot of times uh, so don't don't be disheartened if you get a plant and it starts to look kind of bad give it some time and let it regrow let it take its submerged form uh, and i think that you'll find that most plants are going to go through that so don't don't let that dissuade you i guess would be my big thing if you're like oh man i tried these plants and they start dying every time i put them in the tank um give them time you know a lot of things can take you know couple days couple weeks just depends on the plant and how long they've already been submerged so you know if you've got i think on the mosses a lot of times it can be four to six weeks for them to transition over but a lot of plants will go through that so don't get disheartened by it please all right i've tried to fix the the setting i don't know why we're having issues um on the connection it's very odd it says i've got excellent connection on everything and all, the studio is all looking good so i apologize i'm not sure why that's happening our internet speed is good we're hardwired in everything that i could possibly do to make it work is done um so we're gonna blame youtube so so they were skipping number nine because they didn't even bother to put a picture so why should we do number nine right so is that the Luigia? That was the uh, one that I don't even, I'm going to Oh, no, I meant the next one you're showing. Oh, yeah, the, no, the next one is the Ludwigia, yeah. Number eight is the Ludwigia repens, um, which is an awesome plant. It's got some great reds or purples to it. Um, I have not had so much it's... luck with it. I see one good strand growing. I just have not had luck, much luck with it. It's a really pretty plant. It is. It really is. And I will say, um, I'm not not a brand ambassador or endorser or any of that stuff. You'll hear me talk about some aquarium co-op stuff during this because we're talking plants. They've got great plants and they sell great plant products. Um, but I have started using with any of my red plants, the Easy Iron on top of the Easy Green in my tank. And I've noticed that those do a lot better now that I'm adding the Easy Iron. And then we've got I, the I love the Easy Green. Yeah, Easy Green is amazing. Um, and I, the Easy Iron is probably going to last me for forever because I don't have a lot of red plants. But um, the Easy Green, man, that's, that's some need to have stuff. I love it. And it's it's exactly that. It's easy. You go through. We'll, uh, we'll, and we'll get a little bit deeper into that after we talk about the plants, talk about keeping them healthy. So some people say it looks good and sounds good. Other people are having issues. I'm sorry if you're having issues. I do apologize. I'm not sure what's going on. I think uh, YouTube is still mad at me. It started um, deleting my comments the other day on another live stream. Google did. So I don't know what I did to make it mad. But there was a question slash comment. Delilah's Critter says, I have used Flugel tabs. I honestly don't know that I've seen a difference. I could be doing something wrong. So I have not used the Flugel tabs. Uh, but again, back to Aquarium Co-op, I've used their tabs, and I have definitely seen a difference with them. You kind of want to put them out in a grid-like pattern, and they've got the directions on there. Um, but I have definitely seen a difference with those. I've not tried the flippable tabs myself. Uh, Ed, I don't know if you have either to say whether they've worked or not. Honestly, I haven't used any tabs. Uh, all my planted stuff is in uh, real soil. So I really haven't worried about it, but I do have a couple that I was thinking about using the tabs finally because, well, those ones I was just talking about, Nathan Swords, uh, they're in an all gravel tank, and I figured they can't. His was in originally an all gravel tank, also. So I was thinking about putting some of those tabs in there and uh, seeing how they work because I'd like to give those plants some extra nutrition. Well, I've got, for example, I've got tabs underneath this crenum here. 
and this stuff has just taken off like crazy. That that is a sand cap, but that's not a dirty tank. That's just sand over gravel, um, and that crinum easily comes out to here, except for the flow it directs it towards the uh, overflow in the back. Um, so I try and keep it tucked that way. That's one of those I'd love to have a, a really tall tank to put it in. Priscilla MK makes a great point, and she had a super chat, I do believe, or a super sticker a little bit ago. There it is. Oh. Priscilla with a $2 super sticker. Thank you for that. It says shy with a little huggy emoji. We've got <laughs> Mrs. Fever on here, even though I'm not shutting up and letting you talk. So thank you for that, Priscilla. Hi, Priscilla. And then oh, well, her yeah, comment. Yeah, Priscilla, though, said, I don't know if you actually read her whole t thing, though. She said that the Luigia tends to like the softer water with good flow. Okay. And so that's almost the opposite of what I've got going on because I got somewhat hard water yep. and I don't have super flow because I just have the one sponge in every tank. So crank that baby yeah. up. Yeah, well, I don't think so. <laughs> but I could put it in another tank that does have some flow. I appreciate it. Priscilla is such a knowledgeable person. She knows so much. She's awesome. And then she had made a comment. And again, I'm not the plant expert, and I'm always learning as I hope everyone else is. But she said mosses love iron too. So thank you for that, Priscilla. I'm going to start dosing some iron in my moss tanks and see how that goes. That should help from the sounds of it. Yeah, whichever one of us makes the next order to Aquarium Co op, we got to remind me to write down uh, iron. Well, I, I need about. 20 sponge filters so i, I will let you know because i've got to get those for the uh the beta wall that i built okay oh do you i think i caught everything that was highlighted if you do have a question please feel free to put at fisher and fever on there it will highlight it for me and i will be happy to get to any questions even if they're not plant related but we're going to move on here to our next one and this is one of my favorites it's ballast and area and there are a lot of different varieties of it you know you've got your giant valve jungle valve um, corkscrew valve, several types of valve, and I, I love the stuff. The giant or the jungle valve. Oh, it's this tank over here. Ah, that tank there is just massive, filled with it, and it's just piled high. I'm going to be moving that into about a three foot tall tank, and so it's going to look like awesome. crazy. I think that's the 200 gallon, I think, or the 220 is like two and a half feet tall. So that's what I'm hoping at one point. I'm going to move over what I've got that's really tall and, of course, a bunch of smaller stuff. And it's going to spread like crazy anyways. So I'm I'm thinking like a two-foot wall of jungle dial pretty much that's, you know, two-foot plus tall is going to look really awesome. Yeah, I've got – you remember that one square tank that I had? It was pretty much empty. That was you come down the stairs and there was like a it's it's just a square but it's real tall. Well my mom gave me a castle where she really wanted me to put it in one of my tanks. Mm -hmm. And I put it in that tank and everything kept dying. And I think that, that she she told me she ended up getting it at a garage sale down in Florida. I think it was in a saltwater tank. And it was leaching minerals and salt into my tank, and it was just killing everything. I mean, even the plants couldn't live in it. So redoing the whole thing and saving the fish that are still in it, because there are some new fish. And uh, that's why I'm going to put the jungle in. But, man, don't buy don't buy ornaments from garage sales. It's just – and if you buy an ornament for a friend, don't demand that they put it in the tank. Just, oh. that, that's one of those things we could go into a, a whole rant about is um, buying gifts for fish keepers um, especially if you're you're not a fish keeper per se that makes it even harder for you but um, in general buying gifts for fish keepers can be difficult uh, Recon's Aquarium says I keep wanting to call you Recon 338 uh, I do like the name change those fish from fever I have a tank and it scrolled on me that might be a quarter inch to maybe a half inch unlevel on one corner do you think i should move it it's been like that for a while now so contrary to what i hear a lot the most important thing is going to be is the tank 
level with the floor in terms of it sitting solid on the floor or the stand rather and then is the tank sitting solid on the stand if the stand is solid flush to the floor and I'm, I'm pushing on my desktop here like you can see me if if that stand is all the way flat against the floor and then your tank is all the way flat against that stand so there's no twisting or warping anywhere um, and it's just that your floor is not level um, don't necessarily have to do anything about it if you if it's annoying you which it sounds like it might since you mentioned it um, absolutely you could but you want to make certain that it's not because the tank is sitting not flush or uneven to the stand so if there's any types of gaps under the tank just depending I mean you can Corey's done this in a, your local fish store aquatic aesthetics has done this where you can actually put a stand a uh, tank where it's just being supported on the ends of the tank um, and it will hold but if you've got it off to where it's putting a, a stress on that glass if there's any warping whatsoever you can pop that for sure so that's the big thing is making sure that that glass isn't being warped or stretched uh, to the point that it may pop yeah I would lift the stand not the tank yeah absolutely but, uh, like, uh, I've got a uh, seven and a half gallon tank that has a bed in it and it's the it's on a great big four foot pot well the pot's slightly off but you can see it with the water line at the top of the tank yep. and i plan on just taking a couple little pieces of wood and popping it under there and then cutting them flush just to level it just a little because it's driving me crazy absolutely and i see pug i'm going to get your question there your comment uh, but recon did follow up and say the tank is on a desk in the hallway and the desk is sagging in that one spot i would move it if it's sitting on a desk that's sagging that desk is probably going to continue to sag um or at least has the potential to so i would probably get that thing and just make sure that it's flush underneath or it's not being twisted and like bob mentioned you can lift slowly and shimmy um, under a stand a lot of my aquariums the water line is just ever so slightly off because i'm more concerned about that thing sitting completely flush against the stand than i am about you know propping it up a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch um, to try and get it there well, thank you for that suggestion bob and then let me grab it before i get too far pugamus said fisherman fever i added six plants of contortion valve in a 5.5 gallon tank ha i do love valve that is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I will encourage anybody to try Val that has not tried Val. All right. I think we are caught up, so I'm going to roll right on to the next one. Another plant I absolutely love, Java Fern. You like Java Fern, Ed? I love the stuff. Java Fern is amazing. Gosh, is. my cat just kicked my mouse, and now I don't have chat up anymore. Now I can't find it. Oh, yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh you know, it gets so big and bushy. It's beautiful. You, angels like to hide in it. Uh, if you if you have platies or mollies at night in sword tail or yeah, swords, uh, swordfish, sword tails, sword tails at night, they all go in and it looks like fruit because they sleep in it. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's so awesome to just turn on the lights and see them sleeping in there. Like guppies, you know, they all just sleep at the bottom. But it's really neat to see those other fish that like to huddle in the plants. Yeah, and I've got it. That's actually one of the plants I've got going in that uh, that fluval speck. I always want to call it a flex for some reason. It's not a flex. It's a speck. It's a little five-gallon. Um, and I'm really loving the way that it has grown in. Um, it's just really, really cool. And I've got it in one or two other tanks, and I just really enjoy watching it. I haven't done any propagation with it yet but it's getting to the point that I hopefully will be soon. Yeah, it's, it's a super cool plant. I don't know if it's super good for fry because it's such big leaves. I mean, anything's better than nothing, but uh, I don't know. I will say that my shrimp really, really enjoy grazing on it. I mean, they've got a lot of stuff in there to graze on, but they do really enjoy that job of fern. There we go. Petzotic slash multiple aquarium says uh, Fisher and Fever Java Fern is one of the easiest to plants to propagate. So there we go. Shouldn't be too hard. Recon's aquariums with another one says, but that leads me to my next question, Fisher and Fever. Does a 29 gallon tank on top of a, a tall, solid wood dresser inspire great confidence? 
I have put some tanks in some shady places. I will just leave it at that. Um, so I, I would advise you your, your knowledge and use caution and a safety first above all else. Uh, and I have the utmost faith in you to be able to decide whether or not that tank should be there. <laughs> now, Ed, Ed's Mr. Fancy over there with all of his metal um, stands and all professional looking. I had... Well, a big part of the reason why I went metal was because I have a really bad back and I didn't want to build wood. I know that sounds terrible, but... Uh, I was just afraid that it was going to kill me hauling all the wood and hammering it and doing all the extra work. So that's why I went with stands because they, they hold a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they really weren't that expensive because if you, you watch Home Depot, they go on sale every so often. And uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I think they look pretty. Absolutely. Before we get to the Anubius, um, I do want to say just plastic. If you're using dressers or bookshelves or things like that, just keep in mind most stuff now is made of particle board versus actual plywood um, or legitimate wood for that matter, you know, solid pieces of wood. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, I've got a desk over here. It's an old antique and it's made of solid wood and I had a 29 and four 10 gallons all set up on it when we got back from Florida for all the, the fish we collected so I could get everything kind of sorted out. And I had the utmost faith in it, but it's not particle board. Um, had that been made of particle board, I probably would not have put that much weight on it. I think water is like 8.34 or 8.43, you know, blah, 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 pounds per gallon. So that's a lot of weight to put on particle board. Yeah, my first furniture that I bought and it was the first house I ha ever had. How does Nico keep hitting my mouse? Okay. Um, it's like laid out over here, but every so often he touches his toe right on my mouse and clicks everything off. But uh, I bought a computer desk, you know, that was like pretty expensive, at least for me at the time. But it was all particle wood. And the first time I took it apart, it was just crap. Yep. You know, it just it never was strong again. And I, I can't imagine if it would have gotten wet. It would have just been really perfect. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That stuff get, gets wet. It really likes to fall apart. I mean, I've got a bookshelf over here that has an empty 23-gallon bow front on it, and it's particle board. And even with that tank empty just sitting there waiting for me to build a stand for it, I still am like, I don't know if I like that glass up on top of there. There's a lot of potential for things to, to fall. But it was designed as a bookshelf, so I give it a little bit of credit. Um, real quick, since I haven't shut up as I'm known to not do, uh, before we get into that, do you have any favorite plants? You don't? We've got plants in like 50 tanks. You don't have one that's like, <laughs> oh, that's really pretty. Well, just think about it, Shy. You got five more plants to go through. Big <laughs> one. <laughs> I just figured I'd ask. Me. <laughs> yeah, you got to agree with Ed there. Anything to chime in on the plants? Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to talk so people know I'm not just forcing you to be quiet. <laughs> no. No. The Anubius, you liked that Anubius when it was like a foot and a half tall, that mother plant, before I chopped it into bits. Yeah, but then you ruined it. So yeah, it well, the piranha kept eating it, so I had to cut it into pieces oh. and get rid of parts of it. But I love the Anubius. I do. And you've got so easy. a lot of varieties. You've got the, the larger ones. You've got the Nana, the Nana Petite. Um, really great stuff. I guess we kind of could have talked about, you know, what not to stick into the substrate and what to stick into the substrate. But I figure if you've got questions, feel free to ask. Um, and hopefully that checklist at the beginning, if you will, as we went through. John Cox says, I thought she was the silent type, LOL. Yeah. She, she can be, but at the very beginning, we discussed different types of plants. That kind of gives you a good starting point in just, you know, going to Google and say, hey, what is this? And that will help you with that general group and say, okay, rhizome plants. I don't want to bury that thing in the substrate. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that 
Hopefully. We need to get moving, though, because Ed's show is up in 17 minutes. That hour flies, especially we'll when just it's... We'll just carry this conversation straight over to there. Okay, that'll work. And we'll just keep going. But Anubius is, is a wonderful, wonderful plant. Now, here's one I haven't done, but I, I, I think... I know you've done water hyacinth. Have you done water lettuce coming in at number four here? I do. I can grab some for you. It's right in this tank right here. It looks... <laughs> is, as good as this plant looks on top, I think it looks better on bottom. Huh. The root system is so much cooler. It really is. So one thing, uh, now I haven't done it with water lettuce, but I took a bunch of frog bit outside of my tubs for my guppies. And the root system on that stuff outside is, I mean, it's all the way down to the bottom of the tubs. It's well over a foot long on the ones that I've got outside versus inside the roots. Maybe you get like that generally. It just multiplies so quickly. Uh, I like, where was it? I was trying to bring up Priscilla's comment. She said, you don't ask a cichlid person about plants. Yeah, hers, I guess, would be the uh, plastica, the plastic fake plants. Or, you know, the comment my friend Tosa can eat. Or things that her friend Tosa can eat. There we go. All right. So here's a good one. This is great for fry as well. Hornwort. It's a good, <clears throat> a good one to let float. And there are a lot of different things. A lot of the stem plants, if you will, um, you can leave them to float. So like the wisteria we talked about, um, Rotalia. Um, goodness, the hornworts, the moneywort, that type of stuff. I'm trying to think what else. Just about any of the stem plants. And, and I've actually What's been... The hmm? the you got one? the octopus and the red. Um, oh goodness, I don't even remember what that was. That's how much of a plant person I am. I don't even remember what I bought before. Hey, well, Foxy's like Fishes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so no I don't know. I ordered like some red plants from Co-op, and now I can't even remember what they were. I don't know, but they're really pretty. Yeah, and they had a lot of purple to them, so I think that helped as well, since your favorite color is purple. But there are a lot of those plants that uh, John Cox's home needs medium to highlight in his experience. I, I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, I've had have luck. But you know. need to crank up the light. See, that's the thing is I think I have medium to low lights because I don't, I don't like lots of algae either. Oh, I'll choose your friend. Algae and duckweed is like the perfect, perfect resource. To just suck up nitrates. Yeah. That just well, made a lot of people mad. I probably got like 50 thumbs downs. I throw away a softball worth of duckweed a day, I think. I could make a fortune since it don't, sells for $6 an ounce. Absolutely. Now, th this is going to bring us to our number two aquarium plant on this list, and this is why I chose this list. Number two on the list is, in fact, duckweed. I got a kick out of that. I had, And then that, again, is why we went with this particular list. Um, I, I will give it this. Duckweed, in my opinion, can definitely serve a purpose. It can be great if you've got fish that like to eat it. Um, I like it in my piranha tank to kind of diffuse the lighting. So if you've got a fish that maybe feels a little bit more comfortable with dimmer lights and you don't want to try and grow out, you know, 12 square foot or, you know, 16 square foot of frog bed or any other type of floating plant, throw some duckweed in there. That stuff will multiply exponentially rather quickly. And then you've got diffuse lighting for those fish to make them a little more comfortable. But how do you feel about our number two there, Ed? Do you think that should be number one? If I had goldfish, I would definitely agree. I've got only okay. one fish out of all the fish I have that loves eating it. And unfortunately, I make more than he can eat. And he's right. one of my biggest fish I have. I got a giant tinfoil barb who just eats it like spaghetti. I don't know, spaghetti. That's probably a weird one. And, and we've got he eats it like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. I so, like eating a lot of spaghetti. Normal people don't eat spaghetti like me. <laughs> Priscilla hates the duckweed. Um Dragonlair hates the duckweed. Delilah's Critters is an unapologetic lover of duckweed. Maine's Tails Fur and Fins loves the duckweed and Frogbit. Frogbit's one of my favorites for floaters. Yeah. Um, John Cox was saying, Ed, I dumped a, uh, every bit of a pound of duckweed every week from my tubs. 
it is a love hate plant depending on if it gets in the wrong tank and that's exactly it it's kind of like hair algae in that aspect if you get it somewhere you don't want it good luck getting rid of it Pugamus says i like the big duckweed there are three varieties i, I think there are three there might be more but i know of at least three i have um, two types i've got the medium and, or maybe i have the small and the medium i don't i've got you i got one that's a little bigger than the other <laughs> So I don't know if there's one that's bigger or one that's smaller. Congratulations. Atkins Nature Aquarium says, I just got done editing my 100 subscriber special video. Now wait for it to upload. Glad to hear it, Ian. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, Priscilla says, I'd rather have Slovenia, red root floaters, or frog bit. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that. I'm just saying duckweed can, can serve a purpose. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but it is horrible if you get it somewhere that you don't want it. We've got 76 people watching now, 59 thumbs ups. I appreciate you all very, very much for that. We've got about 10 minutes left. So let's roll into the number one on this list. The Amazon sword. It's kind of hard to argue with that one. I don't, it's not necessarily my number one, but that's definitely a great plant to kind of get people into the hobby. Um, beautiful plant. You've got a lot of varieties to Amazon swords, uh, a lot of sword plants in general, <laughs> and they're a fairly easy plant. So I can't really argue too much with that. Don't float that one though. Please don't. I, I floated that one. Not because I wanted it as a floater, but because I've pulled it out of a tank and just hadn't gotten around to planting it. And so I let it float in the tank. It will do some really funky stuff if you float it and you will see a good bit of die off generally speaking. Mm. So, but the good thing is you can trim that basically all the way down to the root ball and plant that root ball and it'll grow right back. It takes a little while. Now, this one is probably good for, uh, you know, like, like egg layers that like to stick their eggs on it. Was Anubias on here? Yes, it was a number five, I think. Okay, so you got Anubias in this one that are good for sticking eggs on probably. Yep, absolutely. But still, again, it's not a great fry cover. But, it, I mean, it's a great line of sight block for some fish because, I mean, it, it, it kind of gets bushy and big. So Yeah, and I will say I have seen a lot of angels lay eggs on, um, sorry, I saw the super chat pop up on Amazon Swords. Pet Zotic slash Multiple Aquariums Diego with $2 super chat with three smiley faces. Thank you for that very much, my friend. I believe I am supposed to be on Diego's channel as a guest this upcoming Tuesday, I think. Correct me if I'm awesome. wrong, Diego. Um, but I think I'm supposed to be a guest on there here in the not-too-distant future. And then I do just want to mention real quick, I am actually going to be discontinuing my Monday live streams. We're going to keep the Thursday night and the Saturday night with three live streams a week. It's probably a little bit more of me than you all want to see anyways. And that's going to give me time to actually put out some quality video. Um, I've got a really good one. I think I'm going to do my releases on Mondays now instead of doing a live stream. But I've got one I've been working on. It's got a lot of, if not almost all, underwater footage of various tanks. Oh, so nice. I hope you all enjoy that. That's going to let me focus more on putting out some more content for you all to enjoy and less sitting here talking over my co-host. What? Well while we're talking about Diego, uh, I'm on. I'm now his new co-host. Okay. Yeah, I was a free agent. I lost my job with Chris. <laughs> uh, and uh, Diego went and picked up my contract. So now I'm on with him at the same time as I used to be with Chris. So he's at, I believe, 8 o'clock Central on Tuesdays. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And I just got a package today from Diego. Very nice. Uh, yeah, uh, it was actually before he had the multiple tank aquarium website. Mm -hmm. Everything was on Petsotics. And uh, this happened prior to the Cova, and I had bought a uh, big old python from him. Yep. The, the, the water, the pipe, hose one. And uh, their factory shut down for the Cova. And I asked him just to hold my order, and he did. And their factory started up, and he sent me out. It came out today, so I was super excited. Uh, he told me it was coming, so I decided 
not to tap any of my water or do anything because I'm breaking down and doing it the easy way like everybody else. And I'm going right. to start the pipe on the fill. And I'll still use my pump to drain because I just like to drain quick. But, uh, yep. So thank you so much, Diego. You're an awesome business guy to deal with. Uh, I recommend everybody go to his website. Great Absolutely. I've done some business with him as well and always had a fantastic experience. I do want to point out uh, Atkins Nature Aquariums had a good point uh, as well as somebody else. I lost what it was. It says Amazon Swords have massive root systems when they get well established. Yes. So I've pulled up Amazon Swords that had root systems like that. I mean, they just sprawl out so they can take away nutrients from other plants. Uh, John Cox pointed out he had one uh, clogged up an under gravel filter. So just keep that in mind when you put your swords in that they can get some really massive root systems when those things get going. Someone had asked what my number one plant was. So I've got my list of top five. Um, and I guess I'll just go through them or do you want to do my five and your and then your five okay. and my four and your four? You know what? We're so close to the top of the half hour. I wonder if we should say, like, instead of rushing, I guess we could start and then we'll... Uh, just carry it over to mine. Gotcha. That cool. Yeah, so sorry, I was listening number to number five. Let's go with our lowest to our best. Yep, absolutely. Like our best right off the bat. Absolutely. Oh so. my gosh, you guys, stop telling me about the Chiefs game. I'm recording it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't want to know yet. All right, so we'll, we'll get away from that. My number five is it wasn't even on our list but it's actually uh pogostemon stellatus octopus or octopus plant if you're not familiar with it you can google that um it is an amazing plant i hadn't had it until i guess about two months ago now i ordered some from co-op and i have absolutely fallen in love with that stuff absolutely love it so that's my number five you know what can i recommend us do something sure can you go to the co-op's website and then go to the different plants that we say because like, uh, no, no, no. With five minutes left, I don't know if I can or not. Okay, well, let's see. I'm on their website right now because I was going to cheat and gotcha. use it as a reminder. <laughs> so I want to see what the Pogamo... How do you say that? Um, just search Octopus and you should find it. Okay. Or search Pogo. There it is. Now, that I believe is the immersed form that they've got on there. Swipe over, see if there's one that's a little bit more stringy looking. That sounds bad, but it's actually not. I really enjoy the way that it looks underwater. Yeah, so it, it's a really awesome plant. Real quick, I want to say aquarium is maintained by Andy. Thank you for the $2 super chat. It says, howdy do. Always good to see you, Andy. <laughs> she keeps getting to be with those. I will, and I guess I'll do one more. I think we got one more. I think that was for Diego. I don't know that we got one for Diego before. This one looks a, it looks a little more like grass here. Yeah, it is a very cool plant. Now, what's that plant that Corey has in his tank that looks like an octopus? Are you talking Are about the kind of spirally one. one that goes everywhere? Yeah. The, That's going to be the, the crinum calamostratum. Okay. Crinum. It, it's, it's a wonderful plant. Now, you see, I have six of them, and they're all doing incredibly well. It just looks like strings all over. But... Again, it's it's just for looks. Does it do anything good? <laughs> I mean, uh, fish can't sleep on it. It fry can't hide in it. It's literally just for prettiness. Yeah, Crenum, John Cox. Yeah, it's it is a beautiful, beautiful plant in my opinion. What's your number five, Ed? My number five is actually the water lettuce. Let's see if I don't know if Corey sells water lettuce, but. Like, I didn't know it was going to be on our list, uh, but I love the water. I And I used remember at the beginning of the year when we were getting water hyacinth. I like water hyacinth, too. Yeah. But uh, they had water lettuce and water hyacinth in every big container we looked at. And I was like, who would want that stinking water lettuce when you've got this awesome looking plant that's kind of waxy looking, that has amazing flowers. The flowers only last for like a day, maybe two. And now my cat's touching my... My cat apparently likes the banana plants. But uh, uh, I love the water lettuce root system. I have it in one of Priscilla's tanks, her uh, 
Blue Dreams tank. Mm -hmm. And I love how the shrimp can crawl on those weed, or the weeds, the root systems. And the root systems are, I should have, maybe at the break, I'll put my computer, my camera on so you can see the root systems. But they're just amazing. Or we'll find a, something on the website somewhere. But they're just huge roots that have lots of veins coming all over the place. I, I, I don't really care for the, the velvety top, but I love the bottom. So that's Very my nice. number five. No, you missed a question. I missed a question. Oh. I missed a question. Super random question. Okay. Oh, it wasn't highlighted. Got it. Delilah's Critter says, super random question, a little off topic. So if anyone in the chat can contribute, I would appreciate it. I have a zebra Danio that eats flake food and then spits it out and repeats. Is this normal? Generally, when I, and this is just in my experience, but when I've seen fish spitting food out, it's usually because it's a little bit bigger than they want to swallow it at. So a lot of times they'll grab it and kind of munch it, spit it back out and then go back at it. Um, in my experience. If it's too That's, hard and they can't crunch it up, what yeah. what type of food was it? I thought it was a flake food, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go back up. The flake should uh, soak up water and make it mushy enough for them to eat anything. Yeah, so it may be, and I don't know this for sure, but if you're getting dropping bigger flakes in, just kind of give them a little twist with your fingers so that it kind of crushes them up a little bit. If you that's not the case, let us know and we can try and figure it out. But usually from what I've seen when they're spitting out, food it's because it's a little bit big for their mouth what type of fish is it it was a zebra danio i believe let me go back up uh okay. i have a zebra danio yes this right here is omega one flakes and what i've done is i've put a bolt in there and i shake it uh let me find the bolt or a nut actually i have a nut in there and i shake it so it's just a powder and uh, everything with a little mouth really prefers the really broken up stuff. So basically, I put the big flakes in and I just go. And it's just, it just powder. And I, I tell you, this is a great trick. It you know, is. Just plastic just, container and smash it up. And they won't fit this stuff out. And just keep in mind, if you have uh, bigger fish, you're going to crush up their big flakes. Yeah, so, so don't do it for all of them. <laughs> Yeah, my, my piranha wouldn't like that too much if they had the powder. But yeah, most of my stuff I, I kind of powder as I feed it just because I do feed out of the same container for the big and the small. But that is a wonderful tip, Ed, and I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, Ed, we're, we've gone into your time slot. Do we want to go ahead and switch over to your channel here? Yeah, why don't you switch over and uh, we'll just start back at the top. Right. Well, let me say... Or not back at the top at number four. Yeah, let me say thank you again real quick to everybody. Uh, we did have... Bill Witt and Katie's Almost Living the Dream both re up their memberships, which puts, us, which puts us at 42 members. So thank you very, very much for that. I do greatly appreciate it. You all are awesome. Um, and I can't say thank you enough for that. Thank you to all the moderators, the lurkers, the listeners. Atkins, yes, they do eat flake, but stay tuned for Monday's video, Ian. Uh, that's all I'm going to say on what the piranha eats. Uh, stay oh, tuned for Monday's video. Nice job. I, was, I didn't even catch that they ate flake. But... Um, so we had both of them rejoin. And then with the Super Chats, I want to say thank you to you all. Uh, of course, again, thank you, moderators, the lurkers, the people catching this on the re replay, Tampa Tom Fishing and CJ Black. I appreciate you all. I do also want to say we have removed the ads from the middle of the live streams. That was getting really annoying. And they were putting it. YouTube was putting them like every two minutes automatically. So I just killed them. There are no more mid-roll ads on the live streams. So that should make it a more enjoyable experience. Get down through here, and we've got Grumpy Mike's Fish, Fantastic Freaks, Kaler's Aquatics, Priscilla MK, Petzotic slash Multiple Aquariums, and Aquariums Maintained by Andy. I appreciate you all very, very much. Thank you for the super chats. So let's roll on over to Ed's. This will give everybody a second to go to the bathroom, grab a snack. I don't want to say snack and a beverage because that's Michael's Fish Room thing, but, you know, re-up on your food and drink status. Thank um, you. Absolutely. I will say, though, if you're watching the replay and somehow you managed not to go over to Ed's, thank you, Mrs. Fever and Ed for being here as well. And until next time, keep your fish healthy, keep yourselves healthy, catch yourself a little fish room fever. Take care, everybody. And thank you very much.